with us, if you will, to Matthew chapter number 8 as we continue in our study uh, in the book of Matthew. Amen. Uh, there are some sermons that uh, the devil naturally takes a note of, that he takes uh, a, a interest in. And that is one of these sermons that when we come to Matthew chapter number 8 is when we get kind of locked into where we get in the zero or we get in the bullseye of the devil and his demons. Amen. Uh, unless you've ever been a, a minister and you've been preaching against uh, the devil, you never know what it's like to be a, a pastor. And, and I can only say this morning that I am overwhelmed by what is right out there. I, I feel it. I see it. I sense it. I know it. And yet, here we are as God has laid us this morning in Scripture and I must speak according to God. God, speak through me. God, use me as a vessel, as unworthy as I am, pour into me that I may pour into this congregation. And today that we will see what it really means to be uh, in fight with the devil and his demons. Uh, so many people today, they, they have this illustration or this illusion that it's some kind of mystical thing or devils and demons or something that is made up in Hollywood or, or something that we celebrate on the 31st of October. And, and we just kind of go through it. In fact, we wear all sorts of jewelry. We, are, we have all sorts of clothing. We have all sorts of, of, of euphemism or sayings about the devil, and we kind of treat him as sometimes he's just a, a bad brother. He's just somebody in the family that you tolerate, that you sometimes just put up with because he's just always been there, and you don't know what to do with him, but now you don't want to deal. Well, this morning we are going to talk about one of the hardest subjects that a preacher could ever preach on, and that is the devil and his demons. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter number 8, and I'm going to read one little passage in verse 16, and then I want you to find verses 28 and 29. We are going to stay right there, and we are going to allow God's Scripture to speak to us about your greatest enemy and about the greatest destruction that you can ever and will ever face. And we are going to learn how the devil and his demons tried to destroy the soul of man. You see, it is all about the soul of man. It is the soul of man that God gave to worship him above the heavens and the earth. It is the soul of man that God gave uh, to worship him above the angels. The greatest jewel in all of the universe is the soul of man. And so the devil will do whatever he can to destroy that soul so that that soul does not worship God in heaven. This morning, turn with me. I hope you're already there. Matthew chapter number 8, and we're going to read one verse in verse 16. Look what it says. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. Right there, just underline that in your Bible, possessed with devils. And then look in verse 28 and 29. The Bible says this, And when he, Jesus, was come to the other side, under the country, or to the country of the Gergesians, there they met him too, possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, that no man might buy past that way. In verse 29 it says, And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? I, I want to show you, if I could, a, a, a verse that says so clearly. Look in verse 29, the last part. He said, Art thou come to torment us before the time? You see, you may not appreciate what's going on. You may not see what's going on. You may not know what is the play here, but I want you to know right now that there are devils and demons who are trying to destroy this message from your ears. To destroy or dilute or darken or diminish this lesson, this sermon, this message away from the common things out there. Pastor, you don't need to say these things. You don't need to stir the people up. You don't need to bring out all these things. My friend, I want to preach to you today what Jesus preached. And I want you to know that as wonderful as heaven is, 
Jesus Christ himself spent uh, two times more in Scripture preaching about the devil, death, hell, and the grave. So you better understand that if it's important to my Savior, it should be important to you. And I want to preach this morning about the devil and his dem uh, demons. Amen. First thing that I want you to see is that Satan or the demons indwell the lost of this world. Now, you got to understand that the devil is not going to leave you alone if you leave him alone. His intention, his uh, invention, his uh, in interest is that he indwells, he imbibs, he in, uh, in places himself inside the heart and mind and body of lost men and women. You say, well, pastor, that, 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 does that mean that my lost friend is possessed by the devil? Yes, it does. Does that mean that people who do not uh, 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 believe in Jesus are possessed with devils? Yes, it does. And I want you to really realize and understand that those who know Christ are in Christ. And those who do not know Christ are in the world. And the Bible tells us very clearly that the devil is the Lord and God of this world. He said in Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 2, that the devil is the prince and the power of the air. When Adam sinned, he lost his place. His soul became sinful. And when he sinned, he had to separate from God. And that was the devil devil in his work. In Genesis 3, the devil says, surely you shall not die, but you shall become like God. And so the devil sold to Adam the sin of this world. And that's why it says in 1 John chapter number 5, in verse number 13, it says, wherefore by one man Sin entered into the world, and therefore, death by sin. I want you to know that the devil has his desire to indwell those that are against Christ, a antichrist. And I don't know any other way to say it. You're either in or you're out. You either are a saved man or you are a man who is a sinner. And the Bible is very clear that the devil indwells those who know not the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us this in verse 28. It says, there met him to possess with the devils. What does that word mean, possessed? Totally in control. You are possessed by the devil when you reject Jesus Christ. You are possessed in ownership by the devil because you have neglected the redemption of Jesus Christ. You have been bought through sin. And that's why the Bible is very clear in Ephesians chapter number 2. It says, not by works, but it is a gift of God. Does the Bible not say, for the wages of sin is death and the death is the devil and the devil has decided that he's going to indwell the lost of the world i don't know the way to say it and so many times we smooth it over we cover it up we don't talk about it and we just let it go hoping that everybody's going to the same place let me tell you all wrong roads do not lead to rome only the road to hell leads to Rome because that, that is very clear that the Bible is saying that you have to choose one or the other. And if you are a, a son of the, a Lucifer or Beelzebub, you will do his work. That's why it's said in John chapter number 8, verse number 44. It says, you are of your father, the devil. Amen? And in the lust of your father, you will do. You are born in sin. You are born into the family of sin. You are a, a one, a disciple of the devil. And so I don't know any other way to say it is that if you do not know Jesus Christ, and that person that you're thinking of right now does not know Jesus Christ, they are a son of the Lucifer because by uh, inference is that they are indwelled by the spirit of the Antichrist. And, and that's the way it is. I, I quoted Ephesians 2, but let me do it again. You walk according to the course of this world. 
That's lost people. They walk according to the course of the world. They, they look in their own sight. They look in their own mind. They, they say within themselves that they are righteous enough to please God. They say, like Cain, that the things of my hands are going to be good enough for me to get into heaven. I hear it all the time. Well, I just hope my good outweighs my bad so that I can get in. You'll hear this. Everybody dies and goes to the gates of St. Peter, and Peter looks at a book. That's not the way it is, brother. You see, it says in Ephesians 2, it says, You walk according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. I'm saying this, that if you are not saved, you are a child of the devil, and of the devil you will do his bidding. You can't be good enough to go to heaven. You can't be good enough not to look out for yourself. You can't be good enough to get out of hell. You can't be good enough. That's why uh, the apostle Paul wrote, he said, there shall be no flesh judgment justified in the sight of God. You have got to understand, the devil has indwelled those who know not Jesus Christ. Amen? Look what it says Luke 22. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went, he went his way, and communed with the chief priests and the captains. I, I want to tell you, you can look like a Christian, you can go where Christians go. You can do what Christians do. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you are a son of Lucifer. If you can be a leader in a church, you can be a part of the choir, you can be somebody important at some big place, and you can sit up front, my friend, but I want you to know, you are a child of the devil if you know not Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that those that that know Jesus Christ shall flee from appearance of evil. They were in their hearts. They realized that they're sinful, that they are separate, that they need a Savior. But there's many, many, many who are indwelled by the spirit of the Antichrist. Uh, you know, you know, religious folks are, are some of the worst. I'm not saying righteous folks. Get me right. I'm not saying righteous folks. I'm saying religious folks. Religious folks are some of the most uh, used people of the devil. Somebody say amen. Amen. I mean, you got a drunk, he's a drunk. Everybody knows he's a drunk, right? You got a drug addict that's laying in the gutter, you know they're a drug addict. But you got somebody that drives a fine car. You got somebody that is wearing the fine threads. You got somebody that's got the great title. And they're sitting around, but inwardly their hearts are ravenous wolves. They are the ones that you've got to watch out for. Because they are indwelled by the spirit of the Antichrist. They are indwelled by the spirit of demons. And these demons bring themselves up to be something. Matthew 23. Matthew 23, 15. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. That means you go everywhere to spread your venom. You go everywhere and try to get somebody to believe your way and that you're somebody. Amen? He says this, And when you make a proselyte, you make him twofold more the child of hell than you are yourselves. Jesus said, You scribes and Pharisees, you make your dwelling in hell. You are being operated. You are being controlled by the devil himself. Now, I, I want to tell you something today. Amen? That the majority of the people that go to buildings, not the church, that go to buildings, they are in their own eyes righteous. And as righteous, they are wretched. And in wretched, they are lost. And in being lost, they are being indwelled by Lucifer himself to where they think that they are right in man's eyes. Amen? Man, that's hard. Number one. I want you to know devils and demons indwell. They indwell. And when they do that, second of all, they begin to instigate trouble everywhere they go. Amen? Look what it says in verse number 28 again. It says that they were coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce. Amen? You, you'll know 
men by their works. You'll know men by their spirit. You'll know men by their fruits, right? Jesus said that in Galatians 5.22. It gives nine negatives and nine positives. You'll know them. Amen? And, and so what happens is that the demons and the devils, they begin to instigate trouble all around you. If you are a child of God, you have a bullseye on your chest and on your back. If you are a God-fearing man and you are trying to live a Christian walk of life, you are in God's sight. And the closer you get to Jesus, the more the devil will try to hit you and drag you and beat you and slander you and curse you and drag you. He will try his best to kill you. There was a man called Job. Did nothing wrong. But the Bible says he was tormented beyond measure by the devil. Amen? Can I get a witness? You know, man, I tell you what, when you're coasting, the devil don't care. Amen? When you are just kind of easing by, the old enemy doesn't bother you, give you anything. But you get on the front line. You get on the firing line. You get serious with God. And you get to where you say, God, not my will, but your will be done. I want to tell you that you are going to be in the bullseye, in the crosshair. You are going to be subjected to demons and to the devils and to all the influences of the world. Because Jesus said that if you love me, they will hate you. And so I want to say... It says these, these two demon-possessed men, indwelled by the spirit of demons, now they begin to instigate trouble for the church of God. It, it says that they came out of the tombs. Notice where they live. They live in a dead and dying environment. That there's no life. Amen? There's darkness. There's decay. There's disease. All these things. They came out of the tombs, and they weren't happy about it. The Bible says in verse 28 that they were exceedingly fierce. That means that they would grab and that they would destroy. In fact, in Mark, the Bible says that they had been tied up many times and was able to break it, that the chains could not hold them, that the tomb was a place where they moaned both day and night. It's a terrible place. And if you've ever lived in the world, you know that there's a lot of demon-possessed people that are bound by things, that are just down, and they are, are just angry, and they are ferocious, uh, ferocious and they, they're just all these uh, antagonism, and they just never, they're just trying to kill not only themselves, it's trying to kill you. That's this kind that I'm talking about when we are talking about devils and demons is that they live to instigate trouble. Amen? John chapter number 10, verse 10 tells us about them. It says that the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? There's people in your life that if you allow them into your life, they are there to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen? I, I, I said, well, people, I've I, I got my friends, and I, I don't want to turn my back on my friends. My friend, I want to tell you something like this. Jesus said very clearly, come you out from among them, saith the Lord. Well, amen? Separate yourself from them. Amen? The Bible says in Romans chapter number 15, verse number 16, it says, mark them that walk contrary to the doctrine that I have given you, and avoid them. The devil is there to instigate himself in and around you. He is there to instigate trouble in your life. There is nothing in the world that is going to bring you goodness because the Bible says that all good and perfect things come from the Lord above. Amen? You're not going to get it. Amen? Through a bank. You're not going to get it through a sporting event. You're not going to get it by hanging with the world. You can rub elbows with presidents and kings and you not being right with God. You see, the devil indwells the lost. And the devil instigated trouble. He's the king of trouble. Now, man, the T-R-O-U-B-L-E, uh, this great devil is all about stirring the chaos. The devil is all about uh, uh, tripping you up, messing you up, marking you up, and moving you out of the way. If he can get you to fall in the world, then he is taking you out of play. 
Amen. It's going to get real. The lost are indwelled, instigated trouble by the devil. Those people are influenced by the devil to attack you. Now, you stay with me on this. Everybody that knows not the Lord Jesus Christ is, can be, and will be used to destroy you. And we have made friends with the world. We have bought off on the fact that we're supposed to love everybody, that we're supposed to gather everybody, that we're supposed to sit at the table with anybody, that we are to, uh, uh, instead of preaching truth and showing forth light, we're just kind of go along to get along. You know, we all just join hands and we sing kumbaya. We just kind of jump in the boat we don't want to cause any waves. You know, you, you can't talk about this because it's, it's not politically correct. You can't talk about that because it's insensitive to someone else. You can't, you just got to go along. And so what happens is, is that Christians begin to uh, allow those that are indwelled and influenced by the troubles of Satan to come into your life. And, and when I say come into your life, I'm talking about they have your ear, they have your hand, amen? They have your mind, they have your heart. And you start going with the crowd. You start following the masses. You start walking with the world. You start coming to a place to where you just go along to get along. What you used to know was absolutely wrong, now you debate. And now that you debate it, now you kind of just kind of get used to it, and you don't want to cause any stir in, in, in your circle, you know, your social circle. You don't want to talk about it because it may upset someone. That is the devil influencing Christians. Look in verse 28, the last part. So that no man might pass that way. Why does the devil influence Christians to be quiet and sit down so that no man may pass that way to slow you down, to trip you up, to shut you up, and to set you down. You see, everyone you allow in your life that has an a influence or an indwelling of the Antichrist or the devil and his demons, you say, well, they're just my friend. I just hang out with them. I don't do what they do, but I do hang out with them, Pastor. Didn't, didn't Jesus hang out with sinners and publicans? Yeah, he didn't uh, change himself. He changed the room. Amen? He didn't call it okay or social. He called it sin. Now, if you want to preach at a bar, you better be standing on the bar with a Bible in your hand, the Holy Spirit in your heart, and let her rip, potato chip. Billy Sunday... At the turn of the century in the 1900s, Billy Sunday was a fiery preacher. He was a God-called preacher. He was, he was a man that went to the hell holes of the world. But Billy Sunday didn't sit down. He didn't show up. He didn't say, uh, speak easy to them. He went into the middle of all the sin, and he, like Jonah, he stood and he preached, Thus saith the Lord, repent, repent, repent. They threw Billy Sunday out so many times. They blooded him. They beat him. They even made local laws that said he couldn't even go in there. And Billy Sunday would get up just like the Apostle Paul and they'd throw him in the ditch, they'd throw him in the road, they'd throw him in the street and he'd get up and he'd wipe off himself and he would get, pick up that old Bible that he carried and he would go back into it. If you want to do that, you go. But if you go down and sit down and shut up, if you go down and sit down and fit in, if you go down and be a part of the group, my friend, you have been influenced by the devil. And so many Christians today are being influenced by the devil that they cannot go where they're supposed to go and do what they're supposed to do. These demons prevented the apostles from going into that country. 
We've got so much influence of the devil because so many people are indwelled by the devil and it instigates so much trouble of the devil. The Apostle Paul writes to Timothy. He says, in the latter days, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, devils, and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Don't even feel it anymore. I'm saying this. The world should not influence you. You should influence the world. When they start telling the dirty joke at work, you say something. When they start doing something in the world, you say something. When they are all running this way, you better be walking that way. Because it is the influence of the devil that influences weak cardinal Christians into leaving their faith and picking up a social norm. And we, living in 2024, we are so social that we're no good to the gospel. We're so afraid of, of, of hurting this one or hurting this group or, or we're so afraid of our mighty government or we're so afraid of losing something material like our job that we can't stand like Jonah or like Daniel and say, thus saith the Lord. Man, I want to tell you what. The Bible tells me, let God be true and all men a liar. If I ever get to where I will sit down and not say what God has told me to say, I need to be taken out because I don't need to be an influenced Christian by an indwelled lost man to instigate trouble for the demons and the devil. That's where it is. That's where it is. One of the most famous instances of this is found in your Old Testament. You remember the story. Abraham came from the uh, country of Ur, and God made of him a great nation. God prospered him. And Abraham's nephew named Lot, they stood on the mountains, in the Judean mountains, and they looked down into the plain of Jordan. Lot was influenced. Genesis 13, 11 says this, Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east and dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. I want to say to you that if you are an influenced Christian of this world, this world matters more to you than what God matters to you then you are an instrument that is being used to block the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are the instrument that allows demons and devils to come into your home, that allows people to die and go to hell. They're walking off the cliff, and you are sitting there, and you are silent, and you are basically saying, I don't want to upset the boat. My friend, I want to tell you something. It's dying and going to hell. It's time and high time that we as Christians, we would stand for what God has said. Amen? Where, where is it? How are we passing all these ungodly laws? How is it that we got all this ungodly filth? How is it that this world is going to hell in a handbasket? You know why? It's because influenced Christians by indwelling lost people instigate troubles and trials for the whole world. Devils and demons influence Christians. In verse 28, it said that these two men, these two possessed men influenced the disciples. It says in verse 28 very clearly that it delayed God's message. Nobody was able to go past them. It detoured them. It made someone, it discouraged them from going further. Can you imagine? There's Peter, John, James, Matthew, Thomas. Instead of charging these demons, they back up. You read the narrative in, in Mark and in Luke, 
you see that the disciples got off the boat first. Stay with me. Remember, there had been a huge storm the night before that Jesus had to calm. So here you got these 12 good church people. And the first thing they do is when the, shore, when the ship hits the shore, instead of saying, Jesus, you're our leader, lead, they're jumping off the boat and they're saying, oh, dear Jesus, dry ground. And then they see these two possessed men. So instead of attacking these two demons with the gospel of Jesus Christ, they back up and wait for Jesus to come forward. That's the way we are. That's the way we are. Proverbs 1.15 says this. He says, My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. I don't know what kind of relationships you got out there with people. But let me tell you something. You're there to change them, not for them to change you. And if you're doing something or you're a party of something and you're sitting at a table that is ungodly and you're sitting there, you've just been influenced by the indwelled lost of this world. And then you and you alone are responsible for instigating the trouble in your life. Amen? You've invited it to come in. So I'm saying this. Maybe it's time that you do an inventory. I'm not talking about being mean. I'm not talking about being hateful. I'm not talking about being uh, condemning to anyone. But I want you to know the Bible says that you are a light and that that light should be set up on a hill and it should not be placed under the bushel. You can sit at a bar on Saturday night and listen to your good buddies and your friends talk about this and talk about that. You've been influenced. If you can walk hand in hand with the ungodly things of this world, and you even promote it in the sense of of just bringing peace, trying to bring everybody together. Man, Jesus said, I come not to bring peace, but war. I come to bring a sword. I come to divide men into two categories. Demons and those who are dedicated to me. And so that's where it's at. Two more things. What do demons and devils do? They seek who they may devour. They seek who they may devour. Devils and demons. They're a whole lot smarter than you are. Because they recognize who Jesus is. Look what it says in verse number 29. In verse number 29, Jesus and the devils have a conversation. Here's those 12 disciples, and they're just standing there like a mule at a new gate. And Jesus and these, these demons have this discussion. Verse 29 says this, And behold, they cried out, the demons cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? So in one respect, the demons have something on you because you don't look for God every day. You don't look for the presence of the Holy Spirit every day. You just kind of go about your life and you're living from clock in to clock out, from daylight to dark. You're just doing the things you're doing. And the devil's got you in this wheel like a hamster and you've went blind on Christ. The devil's... Always know who Jesus is. They know. They know. They see Jesus. They see him in the sun rising. They see him in the moon as it flies. They see him in the stars. They see him in the coo of a baby. They see him in everything. My question is, do you identify the Savior in everything like they do? Amen? Do you do that? The Bible says in James chapter number 2, verse 19, it says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe, but they what? They tremble. I see a lot of people today that say they're Christians, but they have no godly fear. They're saying things, doing things, they're going places. They're involved in things that are ungodly. They have no fear of God. 
But the devil and his demons, they identify who God is. And they know where the power is. They know where the presence of God is. And in that respect, they know more than you do. Because we, as Christians, we get blind and dull. We don't see the marvelous in the mundane. The devil and the demons know, and they do tremble. And they know God's plan. Look what it says in the last part of verse number 29. It says this in verse 29, the last part. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? You see that? Circle that. Because they understand what's going to happen. You see, devils and demons understand that the devil is defeated. They understand that the devil and the demons are destined to a place called the lake of fire. And so when they come to Jesus, they ask this question that has so much Old Testament prophecy and New Testament uh, importance, and they say, did you come to torment us before the time? What is the time? What is it talking about? Revelation chapter number 20 is the time that they're talking about in Matthew chapter number 8. Revelation 20 verse number 9 says this, And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That is the lost and the demons. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire at brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. You see, the devil and the demons know their destination. Miss Connie, as you come, Sheila, I'm going to ask you one more time. Would you, would you sing, I have decided to follow Jesus? The devil and the demons know. They know that they indwell the lost. I, I didn't get into the last part of the story. You remember when Jesus cast the demons out and cast them into the swine. No, I didn't go there. But I do want you to know that these demons possessed humans. And that these demons go from human to human that are lost. And some of the demons make you wear a suit, make you work at a bank, make you be nice to people, make you be pillars of the community. While you're the grand poobah at your lodge, you're just the nicest person in the world. That's a demon. If you don't know Jesus, that's a demon. Other demons, they torment you with addictions. Whether it's drugs or alcohol or money or fame, they torment you. There's other demons that are cast upon doing those malicious things that we see every night on the news. You see, every demon is assigned a human. That is lost. And those demons, dependent upon Satan's plan for them, are used. Sometimes they'll be dressed in three piece suits and sitting in the front rows of churches. Sometimes there's those drug addicts that you see walking on the side of the road holding a sign. But they're all demons that are doing those things. The devil indwells the lost. The devil and his demons instigate the destruction of this world. The devil and his demons influence the Christians. Man, it breaks my heart as a pastor to see where people used to sit and now they're not sitting there. And I know where they're at. They have joined themselves to the world. And they're doing ungodly things that they shouldn't be doing. They're going ungodly places that they shouldn't be going to. Their voices are angry and bitter and they're just vitriol. A 
That's what devils and demons do. They influence Christians, weak Christians. I want you to be smarter than the devil and identify the Lord in your life. And when you identify the Lord in your life, you know God's plan for your life. My question is this, as you stand to your feet, where will you go? Where will you go when you walk out of here? Where will you go? Will you go forward following the Lord? Or will you go backwards, back into the world and your comfort in the things you want to do and the things that the world tells you is okay? You've got a choice right now. I'm going to ask everyone right now, would you bow your head with us, please? Father, we come to you as the demons and the devils are screaming. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit is speaking in a soft and tender voice to someone this morning that for the first time their eyes have been opened, for the first time their mind has been clear, for the first time they understand what devils and demons will do to them.